So my name is Miguel. Um, yeah, I work um, at Up42. Uh, if you haven't heard of Up42, it's a company that offers a, an Earth observation platform uh, that helps organizations order, access, and analyze Earth observation data. Um, yeah, our platform simplifies data access and management and enables imagery, imagery processing at scale. Um, to, uh, like in this presentation, uh, I'm going to tell you how community specifications helped us design our product, uh, in particular Stack and uh, the OGC Processes API core. Um, in particular, our Stack and OGC enabled, uh, enabled us to scale. Um, it took time to adjust our product to Stack and OGC specifications, uh, but once that was done, um, they were adopted very quickly by our users and they enabled our engineering teams to design and develop faster. Um, we, I will also uh, show you uh, a little bit about our, our impl implementation. And uh, I won't talk about system ar architecture. I won't uh, showcase processing capabilities like live or anything. And I won't show you any code. Um, also, I won't show you any memes today, which is something we do in our presentation today. I'm not like, I can't do it. So, um, we like to praise ourselves uh, as a provider agnostic um, because our users can leverage a wide diversity um, of data providers ranging from Airbus to Planet to Sentinel or Black Sky and more. We have like dozens of data providers uh, in our platform. And um, we also offer um, best in class algorithms for pre-processing and, uh, and processing of, of the data that our customers uh, buy. And so we have a pretty unique offering that enables very interesting use cases um, downstream. Um, you can go out to, your, to our blog and website to see some of those, um, what our users are doing with, with our platform. Um, just like, I'm gonna start by um, showing you um, like some screenshots of our platform so you get a, a feel of it and then I will like go into um, more details on how we implemented the, the, um, the specifications. So, um, as I said, we have a diversity of commercial and governmental data sources. Uh, it's like uh, the, the, the flow in our platform normally starts on catalog. Here we have also a stack search implement, like stackish, so to say. Um, and uh, you can define your, um, yeah, you can define, can you see this? Yeah, cool. So you can define your AOI. Um, and then you, uh, you get the list of like uh, scenes on the left uh, of um, yeah, providers that offer images for, for that AOI and uh, for your search parameters like clouds, cover, and so on. Um, so then you select your configuration and order the data. Um, like after you order uh, the data and the data arrives in your storage, it's magically mapped into stack. Um, so our data management system is like 100% um, um, uh, stack compliant. It's, uh, it has uh, pretty cool search um, functionality. And uh, so as you see like on the left here, whoop, here you will see like uh, a list of um, stack items that uh, you would have in your storage after you order them. Um, you see like um, some of the fields that are off offered by stack, like um, this is crown sampling distance, this is uh, cloud cover, uh, projection from the projection extension, like the EPSG code. This is all stuff that you can, that, that are um, populated by our uh, pipelines. And on the right, after you pick one of those items, you will see a list of, st of stack assets that you can like visualize on the map, like uh, our backend is offering like um, a version of T-Tyler, uh, our implementation of T-Tyler. And um, yeah, you can stream data. We also list like we, we are 
requiring anything that is in our storage to, prov to have like common names for vans so they are easily searchable. Um, yeah, so uh, our, we offer pretty uh, nice user experience there. Um, this is also all, all like, a, we are an API first company, so ev everything that you can see here is also, uh, there is an endpoint for it, and they are conforming to uh, Stack API. Um, yeah, like when, if you want to go into your processing journey, you select for processing your item, and then you would um, go on with your journey. You would, uh, you, will, you will see like a list of processes that you can select. You can already see that this is like, uh, uh, could be like uh, um, uh, referencing um, the processes endpoint of OGC. Um, but like I will show, the, I will show, the, show you this later. At this point, uh, we are performing a validation ahead of execution. So we are um, checking if uh, your item um, is compatible with the process that you're choosing. So since our metadata in storage is so rich, we have very high requirements regarding what is allowed to go into storage. So we, we are pretty sure that once you select your item, you select your process, that the, the, the process execution won't fail. Like, um, um, we, with this kind of validation, we are guaranteeing very low failure rates. However, we are coming from a very di uh, different place. Like, that's where, that's a story, like, I'm going to tell you. Um, it all started very differently. So our legacy platform, when the company was founded a few years ago, um, it was not exactly data provider agnostic. So uh, right now we have like so many like um, providers that we're offering. And uh, at the time we had actually only one provider uh, that was delivering data in one input format. So like, because it's like just one format, we, there was actually no need to have like very um, sophisticated data management because it's just a list of um, archives uh, like each scene is like stored in one archive and it's all only one format. So um, we could like just, uh, um, our workflow would be just order data and go to processing immediately. And the issue with that is that like our processing capabilities uh, were very often designed to be compatible with this one input format and then like, um, that caused a lot of failures, like uh, because once there was any change in the input format, then we had an issue. So they were tailored to to, to our only data provider. Um, but because we wanted to be like provider agnostic, we needed to do something about it. So um, we tried again, and we tried again by first of all introducing a new data catalog. And uh, this state new data catalog was in fact provider agnostic. So um, uh, the, the problem with that was that since, because we didn't have a data management yet in place, our processing engine at the time just didn't work with all these different um, providers. So we needed to do something. And um, yeah, so we failed again. And uh, because we failed again, we, it was time to fail better. And that's what, where we are now. Um, we introduced, after introducing the, da the data catalog that I showed you before, uh, we introduced also data management capabilities that I showcased and a, pro a new processing engine. And um, the, like, the special, uh, what's special about like our data management and processing capabilities is that we don't allow a stack item to go to be uploaded, like we don't allow an asset to be uploaded into our storage without a minimum set of metadata fields. So we are very strict about that. So that ensures like a lot of quality in, um, in our processing engine. Um, so uh, on data management, we are uh, compliant with the Stack API, and um, and we have uh, OGC Processes API compliant processing engine. Um, 
Now we're going a bit more into details, um, like just illustrating like how, how an item would look like and in particular how the assets look like there. Um, our data management, I think th there, there was a presentation last year by uh, Batuan about like how our data management component uh, works and um, explaining all these details. I'm just gonna touch it very um, on the surface. And uh, yeah, like we have, as I, told, as I told you, like any image that we sell or that we produce must always be referenced in our stack catalog. And then we require like any stack items to provide like uh, fields like pen description, projection, ground sampling distance, and so on. So we are, mm, we are like stricter than uh, the stack specification because we want to ensure that um, things are well documented in our storage. And um, yeah, we also like, if you see here like uh, on, the, on our assets, um, like this asset object, we see like we have a type which is always the same type. We convert everything to cog. So um, this is also verified whenever uh, something is uploaded to, uh, to storage. And, um, and we also have a, um, a, like a very um, precisely defined set of roles that we allow because that enables, uh, uh, um, that enables um, better searchability and, uh, and thorough validation ahead of processing. So we uh, allow, for example, data, metadata, like as um, enums for roles, uh, preview, thumbnail, panchromatic, multispectral, and these things can be combined with each other. Um, and, and enable like better searchability. As for processing, um, we don't have a uh, processes, a list process endpoint yet. Um, so process descriptions are right now conformed to OGC processes API specification, uh, but or the process description. Um, but they are internal, like in our uh, in our server, because we have a, a limited list of processes. But this is coming coming soon. Like in the next few weeks, we will have a, a public API with uh, uh, an endpoint with um, get processes process ID. And um, what I want to focus today is more on the um, inputs part of the um, the process description. Um, like here, you see um, already the um, post um, processes, process ID execution. So when we want to execute a process. And the inputs, uh, here we, we are leveraging like um, stack and putting it together with uh, um, OGC processes specification um, because we require an item ID uh, that is referring to an item in our storage and this item is a stack item, obviously. And so we, every process that we execute needs to start uh, with a stack item. Um, then after execution, uh, we implemented also uh, get jobs and get jobs job ID uh, in order to check the status of your job and get job metadata. And um, looking at like uh, an example of job metadata, uh, this is like a process ID detection change. Uh, so it's like change detection between two images. So w you would need like typically like the inputs would be two items. So you refer to these item to these items in your storage, and then um, the results uh, here we deviate a bit from. Um, the uh, OGC specification, but this is also not some not a must in the specification. We call it results, and uh, it's a collection uh, stack collection. So we here produce a collection ID because we are not sure whether every um, process will output one um, item, like one specific spatial and temporal extent. It might be like the process might choose to output like three different items. So we, we need to 
work with the collection, but um, um, the baseline is that we have a, a stack object as input and a stack object as output. That's, that was our objective there. Uh, here is like uh, uh, how our um, API reference looks like. Um, I really love this page because it, like, you can go through all the um, um, all our endpoints like catalog, orders, processing um, assets, um, and um, yeah, you can also like uh, just um, convert. Uh, yeah, just like uh, um, translate it into like different languages like Python, PHP, Ruby, Node, like. Uh, the, the requests, so it's um, pretty cool, and you can like experiment with uh, with our API already. Um, so here you can like as a reference. I will uh, I linked uh, I have the link in the final slide. So just to recap, um, like our processing engine uh, is basically like follows this flow. You select a process. Um, this is the part where it's not uh, yet a, uh, an endpoint, but it's like uh, only. Um, on, yeah, it's, it, it will be out in a few weeks and it's uh, uh, something that you can do via front end to list the processes already. Um, you have a um, execute, like a post um, process execution endpoint, which, um, yeah, which works with on a stack, stack in, stack out uh, kind of framework that uh, everything uh, that goes in uh, must be a stack object that is is on your storage. So we combined uh, uh, OGC process API specification with the stack spec, and uh, like in the job metadata, you will have input and results as stack objects. Yeah, um, yeah like the thing about uh, uh, this, uh, like having stack in, stack out, and having the job definition based on that, is that the, uh, the val makes the validation that I talked about like uh, very easy because like our uh, stack objects are very rich in terms of metadata, and uh, so it's very easy to check compatibilities between the process and um, and um, and the stack item, and we can fail ahead of of execution, so we guarantee quite low failure rates, and um, yeah, like also the design effort for engineers. Uh, because we adopted these specifications was much lower. In the end, it's a very intuitive solution for users as well, and uh, that's uh, like one of the uh, lessons learned from this. Um, yeah, going into lessons learned, um, like by combining OGC and Stack, our design became kind of self-evident and intuitive. And the specification solved a lot of problems we had before, as you saw in the legacy platform. So basically, uh, do use community specifications and tooling, and um, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Um, that's like for 99% of, of, of your um, applications. And um, yeah, like design your solution carefully. It comes with positive side effects later. Because by in, yeah by investing in the comprehensive stack metadata requirements for our data management system, we kind of without knowing it enabled a, a validation service that was that is central to our processing engine. So um, like there are always positive side effects, and yeah it was great fun being here. I loved uh, Phosphor G. It was my first time. And uh, it was, it's very thought-provoking. I have amazing conversations. I'm looking forward to come next year. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, Miguel. Um, I loved your stack in, stack out approach. It makes a lot of sense. So I guess you also track in the stack metadata all the processing steps, right? That came. So the um, um, like the, the each, each job like the traceability is kind of ensured uh, via uh, job um, mm, via a, a job registry service. So the job metadata would um, refer always to the like to the ID of what's coming in and the and the ID of what's going out. So in the next 
uh, job, we will be able to track that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's that's very cool. Yeah. Thanks. Hello, uh, I did not get properly how did you answer that the input are proper to your, are compatible with your, ex with your process? Mm -hmm. Because you also said that you don't, uh, you don't provide any process description. So I am wondering from where the metadata information, your platform is uh, taking yeah. the information to ensure that the process will work. Yeah, uh, so you mean, um Regarding the process um, uh, description, like this process endpoint. Ah. How you can validate? How from where you find the information yeah. for your validation before yeah. executing the process if you don't have the metadata yeah. information stored in the process? Yeah. Description. So um, we are, like the mm, the process description is there. We currently don't have the, um, the endpoint for exposing it. That's the only part that is missing in the whole thing. So it's like uh, we have a task execution service, uh, and there we are storing like statically the, um, the process descriptions. And um, the next step would be enabling like uh, partners to, um, to uh, provide their own algorithms and provide their, their own uh, proce process descriptions. Yeah. For now, we have like the static because it's only a few. And if you, can you show us again the job status, the slide where you add the job status? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Is the definition uh, as the input actually used to start the execution of your process? Uh, the the first step is not um, for the execution. So it first uh, we hit. Uh, a, 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 Another, another service where we have, it's called the validation service. And then only after um, we update the status as valid. So you, here you see, you would get like a status successful. This is after the run is successful. Yeah, right. Like the first step would be if it's valid or invalid. Yeah, if it's valid, then we go on to execution. Right, but the definition field right here, the definition object that you have mm -hmm. in the status information, is it? Does it correspond to the input that were provided during the execution? I yeah. guess yes. Yeah. So it's some kind of lineage, like we have. Yeah. And uh, you are using results, uh, a results field, with an, uh, yeah. which is an object collection collection ID, but I don't see any links to the result. Yeah. Um, like um, so here, uh, there would be a collection ID since this is uh, um, like a, uh, an engine that is running in the. Uh, in the App42 platform, you you can use this ID to refer. Um, no, actually, it's not. Yeah, you're right. This is um, uh, this is not necessarily an ID. Uh, I'm not sure now if we expose. I think we expose it as an ID, but it's a reference to um, our asset, our stack API. Yeah. Okay. So then, why you don't use a specification which mentions that you can add links? inside your job status to point directly to your collection and collection ID? Yeah, like we are pointing to our, to the, to, to our special asset service where, uh, where our stack API is Thank hosted. You very much. Yeah.